Here are some nifty little tricks in Maya. The selection of objects and elements in Maya is an essential part of the workflow. It is therefore worthwhile for the user to learn the subtleties of the selection system in Maya and practice advanced methods. Let's start with very simple things. Here's a scene with some very basic objects. To select objects, I simply click on them with the left mouse button or I hold the left mouse button to draw such a selection frame and all objects are selected. You see that some objects are highlighted in white and one object is highlighted in green. The green one is the last selected object that has a special status in some operations. To toggle the selection status of the objects, you can hold the shift key. So when you click again on an object, then it's toggled on and off. You can also draw a frame while holding the shift key and then the status of all objects is toggled. You can deselect objects holding the control key. So when you click on an object, it will be turned off or when they are selected and you draw a frame, then these objects will be turned off. When you hold shift and control, you can add to the selection. You see when I draw a frame over these two objects, the left one is not toggled. It's just the right one is added to the selection with shift and control held. You see some selection options here on the right side in the modeling toolkit. So this first part here, some selection settings. This one here is very important. Pick marquee, that's the current method that we are using here on the screen. So you simply click on something or you draw a frame over it. That is this method here. To select components, you can also use the drag method, which means you draw on the surface or you, you kind of draw over the components to select them. And finally, the last one here, the tweak marquee, that is only activated when there's a tool activated. So for example, when I use the move tool here, I can choose tweak marquee. And the difference that we have here is normally I first select an object and then I grab it by the move tool and move it around. So with tweak marquee, it is so that the move tool disappears actually, and I only have to use a single click to grab the object. So by single clicking and holding the left mouse button, I can move the object around immediately. Um, that is very helpful to organize things in space somehow, because it's much faster to just grab the objects and move them around instead of first clicking and then moving the things in the direction. So for components, it's also super helpful to use this mode, the tweak marquee mode. You can also temporarily engage this tweak marquee mode by holding the tilde key, which is uh, the key right under the escape key on the top left side of the keyboard. So when you hold that, you are toggling these. So jump back to pick marquee, but when you hold that key, the tweak marquee will be selected. When objects are obscured and you draw a frame over them, so normally they are all selected. So you see that the cube, for example, even though it was it was hidden by other objects will be selected as well. So it selects through all objects, no matter if you see these objects or not. But you can also choose to use the camera based selection system. And I select over all of these objects here. Then the cube is not selected because it was hidden by, you know, the sphere or this sphere over here. So that's a camera based system. You can try out auto and see if that, uh, you know, helps you in your selection. There's also a selection mask up here. These blue buttons here, these are object types and I can turn them on and off to create a so-called selection mask. To find out what these types are, you can either hover over them until this little help uh, information comes up. Or you can write mouse button and you see, you know, these, this button here, the very left one is selection handles and IK handles, for example. Then we have joints, obviously. Then we have nerves, components. Um, then we have polygon components or surfaces, so to say, uh, and so on. Um, you can toggle on and off single parts of this. So, for example, if you want to select just nerve surfaces, you can do so. You can, you know, make your own selection mask, your custom selection mask, and then save this as an, a button to the shelf. That will create a mail command on the shelf that you can use to, you know, turn on exactly this selection 
mask here. This is very helpful as soon as you have problems with the selection priority. I have two objects here in the scene that I've hidden so far. And when I turn them on, you see what I mean here. So normally when I select objects like polygons and nerves here, that's no problem. But as soon as I also select some joints, then only the joints will be selected. And that's a fact of the selection priority. There's even a higher priority and that's this selection or this uh, IK handle here at the, at the end. So when I include that one into the selection, then this one will only be selected. That's the only object that's selected because it has the highest priority of all these objects here. This can be very convenient because it, when, as soon as you start animating, you want to select the animation parts of your setup. But it's very annoying when you want to go back to the polygon objects. And you know, whenever you select the polygon object, you only get the animation pieces here. Um, so that would be helpful to say, hey, I don't want any, you know, IK handles to be selected. And in this case, it will select the joints. And I also don't want any joints selected. And suddenly, you know, I can select my surfaces or my, my polygons or whatever I want to select. So that is helpful. You can also define your own selection priority in the settings, in the preferences here under selection. You will find this section down here. So normally it's set to animation, but you can of course also do your um, polygon. It's actually not NURBS, it should be named modeling because it also includes polygons, of course. So when you are a modeler, then it makes sense to, to turn the selection priority on. But you can also make your own custom selection priority. And for all of these um, components, the, all of these object types, you can define a priority. So I leave it back to animation because I'm used to doing that. There's another thing that helps you select things, and that is the so-called selection handle. Here in the attribute editor for the transform, under display, you find this one here, this display handle. When you turn that on, you will see a little crosshair in the cube and this crosshair shines through everything. So you will see it no matter how many objects cover this cube here. And this selection handle is a super thing because it allows you to select, or to select this cube through all the objects. Only the cube will, here, will be selected here because the selection handle has a very, very high priority. It goes together with the IK handles. So IK handles have a similar or the same selection priority as the selection handles. So, you know, in this case, the cube is also selected. So that is a very helpful thing if you want to make sure that you always select the right thing in a, in a certain setup, especially in animation, then you turn on the selection handle for a specific object. Now let's dive in and have a look at components. And that's why I included this object here. It's a, it's a polygon sphere with some faces deleted. To select the components of this thing, I, I can of course go into component mode with this button up here, but I never, never do that because it's much faster to use the right mouse button, hold it, or you know just strike in the correct direction to select vertices, edges, faces, UVs, or go into multi-selection. Multi-selection means you can select all types of components at once. So edges, faces, and when you hover over them, also the points here. When I go a little bit closer. So let's say we start with faces and I make a clear selection mode with the faces. So to select something, you simply click on it. You To select a whole collection of things, you simply draw a frame again. And then you have special selection modes like this one here. You select a face and then shift double click on the next one to it. That would be a selection for a whole face path. That means, you know, all the faces in this direction. You can do the same thing in this direction here. Shift double click on this one and it will select that. And if it's not this, the next facet, but one that is a little bit in the distance, so shift double click on this one, we'll select all of the facets in between. And that works for all other components as well. For vertices, for example, click and then shift double click. We'll select this whole row here, this whole range. Or when I click and shift double click on the next one, then it will select the whole, you know, point loop around it. And it's really interesting, you know, when you go to edges because edges have a direction already. 
So this one here is a horizontal one, obviously. So when I click on or double click on this one here, it will select the whole edge loop around the object because we know this is a continuous ed edge here. But the same thing, you know, when I click on this one here and double click on this one, then it will select the range of the facets. This works in the, in the case of edges, works also with so-called edge rings. So this is an edge loop and an edge ring is this one here. When I double click on this edge, it will select all of these edges from top to bottom. That's an edge ring. All of these things, you know, holding the shift key and double clicking, you can also do holding the control key and right mouse button. Control key and right mouse button gives you a marking menu to convert selection. So here you have these edge ring utilities and the edge loop utilities, and you can convert the current selection, for example, to vertices. So here vertices, now it selects all the vertices that are touched by the edges that were selected before. So that is a very helpful thing if you have one type selected already and you want to select it to faces, so, uh, for example. So the contained faces in this case are only those faces that are you know, completely surrounded by selected vertices. That is this selection over here. Another good way of selecting things, and you know, some, some of these uh, things are already in here. So for example, I can turn on a selection constraint so that I can only select um, things on the border. So faces, for example, I can only select this on the border. It would even select highlight you know, highlight the only possible selection here. This selection constraint keeps me from, from selecting the wrong things. So for example, I, I want to select only edge rings here. So while I'm in face selection mode, it wouldn't do anything. But as soon as I'm in edge selection mode, you see it highlights only the edge rings that are possible here. And I can select those. That is a very helpful thing because of the selection highlighting. There's another way of constraining the selection and this, this is here in the selection menu and you can tell by the size of the menu alone how powerful selection in Maya is. Here in this menu you will find this one here, this use constraints entry. And this use constraints is, in, is a weird window because it changes its contents depending on what kind of components you are currently selecting. So while I'm in edge mode, it offers me functions for edges. And when I'm in face mode, you see that it changes to, um, to options for faces and similar when I'm in vertex mode. So let's say for faces, we want to see the options here. And then of course I can, for example, select only faces on the border. Currently nothing happens because I say nothing. So this whole thing is turned off. When I say all and next, it will filter the current, current selection and whatever I select next, it will filter that. So I can say, hey, I want to make some overlapping, you know, only in this frame, but there are only the ones on the border that I selected here or on the inside. You know, as soon as I click on it, because I said all and next, it will, as soon as something changes, select everything and then filter it according to my settings. Here are more settings here in the geometry. You can filter by the size, by the mapped area, by distance of a point, by the orientation, visibility, etc., etc. And even, you know, even random would work, which is yeah, sometimes helpful to, to have that. So now I have a random selection of faces that are inside and not on the border. So I can change it to border here, random selection on the border. So this is a super powerful, not many people know that this is a super powerful tool for selection. When you close it, when you're done selecting, I would say close and reset. You can of course close and remember these settings, but it's very confusing when you suddenly can't select things because you have some settings here going on. So always close and reset. Also, there is a fun, there are functions in there, maybe you've seen the buttons, to grow and shrink the selection. So for example, I've selected a facet here and I want now all the facets around it. I can use the grow function here, grow, 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 and also the shrink, shrink, shrink function. So you see, you've seen that the shrink was a little bit different from the grow because the grow is now limited here 
you know, it couldn't select the, these missing faces here. Now when I shrink, of course, you know, this edge is here on the side. The grow is the larger sign and the shrink is the smaller sign. So shift and point and shift and comma would be the hotkeys for that. And when you hold the control key together with that, so for example, I have this selected and uh, shift and control and the point, so larger sign with control would grow only along the current loop. But you have to define a loop. So this one here would also be a loop and I can grow along the loop. But you know, a single face is no loop and you can't grow along a loop. A single edge can grow along a loop that would work here. So convert selection is also a menu here. If you don't, um, if you don't like the marking menus, you can keep this one here open, use the hotkeys to convert the selection. But it's very, very useful to know all these hotkeys to be very fast with the selection. So finally, I want to highlight the ability to draw the selection. I mentioned this one here at the beginning, the drag function. You can simply draw over the surface and when you release, you have um, these components selected. There's also a draw selection tool, which, uh, or this is the lasso tool here actually, and it selects uh, the IK handle behind my, my object here. So when I, when I uh, am, am in vertex mode, for example, and I want to lasso something that is very helpful to have this one, this is the drawing tool. So, oh, that's a huge brush here. How do I, how do I make this smaller? I hold the B key for brush size and then with the left mouse button, you can size it and then you can draw your selection over, um, over existing selection. Hold the control key to deselect things works. And of course, Alt D to deselect everything would also work. There's, um, you know, besides this drag and the pick marquee, there's the lasso tool and the, and the paint selection tool over here, which helps especially when you know your, your objects are very dense. And one final thing here, when I'm selecting things here like this vertex, I can also quickly hit the B key to go into soft selection mode. The B key will highlight the whole object in weird colors, uh, sometimes at least. This comes from the radius. And here's again, you know, you can, you can change the radius while holding the B key. Here, I don't see any radius because it's so large. Oh, you see, here is the radius coming. If that happens to you, you can use the middle mouse button and drag from zero. So while you're holding the B key, use the middle mouse button and then you can drag it open from zero, which is uh, very helpful. And while I only have this one vertex here selected, you see with soft selection, my move tool will also, you know, affect the other points that are around, even though they are not directly selected. There are different methods here in the tools. Let me close this one here. In the tool settings, there are different methods to, to measure the fall off here. So for example, here in soft selection, you can um, say it's a volume, which means you know, no matter how close these points are together or apart, you know, the, only the distance counts. And sometimes you want to measure the distance along the surface. So, um, for example, you know, this one here is might be very close to this point, but uh, measured across the surface, it's not so close together. So right here, you see, here you see what I mean. So when I pick this point here, it will not affect this one here, even though the, the two are really close together, but the distance is measured across the surface and that is a little bit longer way. Global means um, between objects, right? So this was a quick introduction to Maya's powerful selection system. Um, you should really dive a little bit into that because it helps you a lot when you are working with components and with objects and you are, you know, confused why something gets selected or not selected or how to make complex selection. That is very helpful to use the powerful system in Maya.